Today we're going to be talking about the most common furnace problem that most homeowners call HVAC Pro to come out and fix. And this is a very easy thing to fix. In fact, just last week, um, it's starting to get cold here in Salt Lake City. I had four calls that were this problem. It, it literally costs nothing to do. And in order to show you properly how to fix this, I'm actually gonna show you the order of sequence that a furnace runs through when you turn up your thermostat a few degrees and it calls for heat. So I'm just gonna pull the cover off of here first. Now our furnace is calling for heat and by the way, um, each furnace is a little bit different. A Goodman system will have a top panel and a bottom panel. And depending on if it's an upflow or a downflow, the gas portion, the burner portion of the furnace will either be on the top or the bottom. So in this particular application, our blower fan is under here. It's all sealed up. But the burners, as you can see, are right here. They're exposed. And I'm going to show you what the order of sequence is when we bump the thermostat up. So the thermostat is already calling for heat. Now the first thing that you'll notice in just a second is the inducer fan is going to come on. The purpose of the inducer fan is to pull the exhaust fumes and the carbon monoxide, any unburnt gases out of the heat exchanger and it blows it through the exhaust vent all the way out. Now mine is an 80% furnace, it has a big metal flue if yours is a 96 or a high efficiency furnace, it'll have two PVC vents, maybe two or three inch vents coming out of the top. So once we hear the inducer fan motor come on, the next line in sequence is the pressure switch is going to say, okay, we see that the inducer is pulling a certain amount of vacuum, which is specified on the pressure switch. It's just two leads here on a basic furnace. So we saw our inducer, our pressure switch says, okay, this is pulling enough pressure. The next thing that we're going to notice is the igniter is going to glow red. See how it's glowing red? That's called a hot surface igniter. And then you'll hear the gas valve. That's gonna be the next line in sequence. You'll hear this click and then we will have ignition. So after we have ignition, the next thing that's going to happen is this little guy right here. You can see that little uh, rod there that goes right directly over the flame. That is called a flame sensor. And that is what we're going to be showing you today how to clean. The flame sensor tells the furnace board in here, okay, we have a flame, continue running as normal. And as you, I don't know if you just heard it, but the fan is the last order of sequence. The fan comes on and it blows the air over the heat exchanger. Now, the issue is when this sensor gets dirty, as soon as the flames come on, this sensor thinks that there's no flame and it shuts everything down. And then it'll, it'll go through the whole process again. The inducer will come on, the pressure switch will say okay, the igniter will ignite, flames and then it'll stop and it'll just do that over and over and over and over so the first thing that you want to do to fix this problem obviously we're going to turn our power off even if your furnace isn't doing anything by turning this off we're going to be resetting the power to the furnace now each furnace is going to be slightly different. Um, and I'm trying to do a series of videos that shows a few different brands and different positions in, where, in which the flame sensor is located. So as you can see, ours is relatively easy to get to. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pair of pliers. You don't necessarily need the pliers, but sometimes they're a little bit stubborn. Just pull that lead off. And this one is a direct shot, so it's relatively easy. You can pick up some of these on Amazon. I'll put some links to these. Um, if you have a drill or an impact gun like this, I'll also put a link to this bit. It's reversible. It's a 5 16 and a quarter inch. And then as you can see, this obviously wouldn't reach. So what we also have is an extended version. 
same uh, same tip, quarter inch and five sixteenths, except this is like a six inch um, bit. All right, so we're simply going to remove this quarter inch screw just like that. And then we're going to slide this out and mine is a 45. So we're gonna kind of tilt it a little bit this way. And there you have it. That's how easy this sensor is uh, to take out on this particular furnace. Most furnaces are just as easy. Uh, some are a little bit tricky. I have a video coming out on a train uh, furnace. It was a little bit more difficult. It took some time, uh, but we got it done. And you know, if you had a service technician come out and do this, they'd probably charge, you know, $300 just to clean this little sensor. All that's required is literally a tool. Uh, you can take the front of your furnace off and just verify what size the uh, screw is, but it's either going to be a 5 sixteenths or a quarter inch. And these bits have both of them attached. So it's pretty fail safe to get um, either of these bits. I, I use both of these on a very regular basis. So all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take a little wire brush um, or if you have a piece of sandpaper, you can use that as well. Even if you have a dollar bill, you can actually just get the, you know, the stuff off of the end of this and you don't really have to worry about damaging it, like having too rough of a grit. It's not going to hurt this. Um, so very occasionally, um, you'll have a bad flame sensor, but it's very, very uncommon. Most of the time, this is a free uh, repair. All you have to do is clean this, put it back in, and it'll run like it normally should. All right, so we're just gonna do this in reverse. Slide it in at an angle. Line it up with our hole. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put this through the end of the hole and then rotate it like that and line it up with our hole. That's it. Just make our connection and this furnace will be good to go again. Well, believe it or not, folks, that is the number one service call that I get as a HVAC contractor. That little sensor just gets dirty. And so in my opinion, um, I would personally, if I was just a homeowner, I would open up this case, uh, just locate where my flame sensor is and then from there, see what tool I would need to just keep in stock um, by my furnace. It could be something as simple as a, a quarter inch and a 5 16 nut driver, and, and you can make this job a lot quicker by getting a set of these. Um, and then you could also just purchase a flame sensor and keep it by your furnace. Uh, things like that, you will spend like $5 for a flame sensor, and you can save potentially three to $500 doing this repair yourself. Click on this video and this will show some of the other potential problems that I see a lot as an HVAC contractor uh, when I get service calls. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.